Welcome to Bobbert's Box Office Bangers and Bummers, where we look at the weekend cinematic winners and losers. Let's just get right into it, shall we? As far as the top 5 goes, nothing changed from last weekend. It was all about the holiday holdovers as folks went back for last weekend's leftovers. The same 5 films ended up in the same 5 spots. The holidays did give some of the movies a boost percentage wise, with 3 out of 5 outperforming the previous weekend's takes. All of the new flicks arriving on Christmas Day, however, did not fare as well. Despite that, it was yet another record breaking turnout at the multiplexes. The box office pretty much wrapped things up for the year this past weekend as 2018 officially became the biggest grossing ever for the domestic market. Aquaman kept the top spot, netting another $51 million in three days. It can now boast having the smallest second weekend drop among the DCEU movies and is well on its way to reaching $200 million domestically. Aquaman's current global tally puts it in third place among the DC Extended Universe films. China continues to be the movie's biggest market, making a $1 billion international cum a very real possibility. As predicted, Mary Poppins Returns and Bumblebee proved their potential for long legs as both kept their second and third place positions respectively, and have already broke the $100 million mark in worldwide grosses. Unsurprisingly, the Mary Poppins sequel is doing very well in the UK, as it continues to be the film's second best market after the US. As for Bumblebee, it'll be interesting to see how things go for the Transformers prequel reboot hybrid, considering the lukewarm response from audiences for the previous film in the franchise The Last Night. Paramount Pictures sure is hoping that Bumblebee re-sparks audience interest in that franchise. While Bumblebee is tracking modestly well, it's still a long way from the level of international juggernaut that the earlier Transformers films were able to reach. But Bumblebee is still waiting for its release in the world's second biggest movie market, China. Into the Spider-Verse bounced back from last week's massive drop of 50%, notching back up over 11% and making nearly $20 million for the weekend. The Sony Pictures flick has already crossed the $200 million mark internationally and still has a couple more markets to open in before it's finished its run. This Spider is definitely looking like a daddy long legs. The real surprise of the weekend is the staying power of Clint Eastwood's The Mule. Three weeks in and the movie still secured a spot in the top five. In fact, it improved its performance by nearly 25%. That brings it to a total domestic gross of over $60 million. Because of that staying power, I'm naming The Mule this week's banger proving that Clint Eastwood still has plenty of cachet with audiences even while in the midst of superheroes and giant robots. Adam McKay's Vice, with its Christmas Day wide release, stuttered its way to just outside the top five. It settled for sixth place after audiences were less than thrilled with the biographical dramedy about former Vice President Dick Cheney, getting a C-plus cinema score. Despite the star power associated with the flick, which features Christian Bale, Sam Rockwell, and Amy Adams, the flick has failed to generate the buzz that McKay's previous historical comedic drama, The Big Short, was able to raise in 2015. It is, however, However, the highest grossing domestic release for Annapurna Pictures ever, making almost $18 million in just 6 days. So there's some good news there. It'll be interesting to see if these results have any effect on Marvel's rumored intentions to bring in McKay to take up the reins of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Holmes and Watson fared even worse though, premiering in 7th place with a dismal $7.3 million. Its future also looks equally grey as it earned the rare dishonor of getting a 0% from Rotten Tomatoes, while also leaving audiences cold with a D plus cinema score. Now that's elementary. <laughs> The movie is still slated to roll out in other international markets this weekend, so it might get some help in that regard. Still, it's the lowest opening ever for a Will Ferrell, John C. Riley team up, so it doesn't take a detective to figure out that Holmes and Watson is the biggest box office bummer of the weekend. All these flicks will get another chance at improving their fortunes next weekend as only one lone new release arrives in theaters, a Sony Pictures horror flick called Escape Room. Now here's the full list of the top 10 movies for the weekend of December 28th, along with their final adjusted grosses. And that's a wrap for this week's box office bangers and bummers. Leave a comment on what you think next week's winners and losers are going to be. 
Hit like and don't forget to smash that sexy subscribe button so that you never miss this or any other Bobbert's babblings. Until next time, see you at the box office.